All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel today. Um, we're going to make a sheep head skull mount. So the first step in uh, making the skull mount is to, to remove the head carefully. So if you hold the head up, you're going to have to want to go in at an angle and uh, chop to where you don't uh, hit the skull and damage the skull. Um, you can probably see better on this, this skull that's already been done. You want all this back stuff here to be intact because that's part of the skull and uh, uh, part of the beauty of, of the mount is that the skull is fully intact and not fractured or cracked in any way. So in order to do a skull mount, we have to uh, extract a, um, certain bones in order to do it, which basically rebuilds the facial structure of the sheep head. And the easiest way to do this is just to uh, boil the head. <clears throat> Once you boil the head, you, if you get it to uh, like a rolling boil, you pretty much only got to boil it for like maybe 10 minutes. When, when the, the meat starts getting soft and it starts coming off like this, then, uh, then, then it's ready to be taken apart. So another thing that you really got to do too, is when you disassemble the head, you got to kind of pay attention to where the pieces go or else, um, you'll have a really hard time putting them back together. So we're going to go ahead and take this one apart. This is the piece behind the, uh, I call it the razor. This little piece right here. This thing is what cuts you when you uh, grab a sheep head without a towel. If you look at the edge of this, it's uh, serrated. And the back of this plate here is also serrated too. So these two pieces fit like this. And uh, this is a, this skull here is from a larger sheep head than this one here. So we're just gonna kind of put the pieces to where they match and that way we'll know where to, um, where to reassemble everything later. All right, you got some little residue here. Uh, a bunch of these smaller plates you really won't need. You just need a bunch of uh, the, major, the major pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and separate this plate right here. Move the partially finished one over. All right, so we got one side off. Uh, go ahead and take the cheek out. All right. Now, the mouth, when you take the mouth off, it's gonna come apart in the upper and lower pieces. Now, after we get the, uh, the major pieces out of the skull itself, we're gonna take them to the sink and wash them up. Most of this stuff here, you can just use your fingers to, uh, to peel off. It's, it's really gelatinous and, and glutinous. So it will stick to your fingers a lot, but the, they, after you boil it, they, they pretty much come right apart. So you got the top jaw, you got the bottom jaw, and as you can see right here, that's that structure right there. And that is actually, these two pieces here are actually eight different pieces. So let's go ahead and get the other side off. plate, the cutter, a lot of people eat uh, fish heads and I can understand why. I mean, I'm not too partial to, to fish heads, but a lot of people do eat them because I mean, if you take a look at it, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good meat in here. I'll probably take this and give this to the dogs. All right, and another little piece there. Another cheek. Goes up underneath, don't need that. Take 
the eyeballs out. You can just push your finger right through this. It'll it'll let you push the eyeballs all the way through. So there's another good piece of meat. And if you get a piece of the spinal cord attached, just take that off to where you've got basically the just the skull with the little shark fin on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces here and we're going to go over to the sink and wash them off. All right, let's get this skull washed up. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> also, uh, when you boil this head, um, it doesn't smell very good because you're boiling the gills and all that. So if you've got a significant other or somebody who's uh, affected by um, strong smells, you might want to go ahead and do this outside. All right, we gotta pull the out there. It's also good to have like maybe a little stick or something you can go in there and get that the brain out brain cavity and uh, water is your best friend when you're doing this because it'll keep your hands clean and uh, free from sticking to everything get in here with a brush once you break this stuff free, since you boiled it, it, it pretty much comes loose pretty easily. Alright, so basically what we have there is uh, the skull. The main, the main piece. So we're going to go ahead and put this over here. Got a gill plate. This one here actually has a, um, most terminate right here at this point. This one here actually has another growth down here. Uh, every skull is different. It's like every fish is a different individual. So, what you want to do is you want to try to remove as much uh, of the uh, loose organic material as you possibly can and get the bone as clean as you possibly can and one of these little brushes is really good for that and it'll clean them up really nice and be careful too when you're doing this because that thing is a razor sharp you can cut a steak with that stuff I'm telling you out for this one too. See this one here just goes down to a point it doesn't have that that same it was just a little piece of extra growth that this fish had. Alright the jaws okay now um the bottom jaw might want to come apart on you and that's perfectly fine too because you can super glue the bottom jaw together but what you're going to have here is the jaw terminates here into a pocket and then you're going to get this um, little sharp piece here it looks like an arrowhead this actually fits right there in the jaw so the bottom and the jaw once it's complete is going to be eight different pieces if the uh, if the uh, the jaws separate, you can actually break this jaw apart to make it easier to clean. And if you do that too, the um, it'll get rid of more organic material too. If you don't boil it as long, the jaw will not want to come apart. But if you boil it for a long time, the jaw will just uh, pretty much instantly just fall apart. So.
I'm gonna get all his plaque out of there and all the fiddler crabs that he's been eating <laughs> just jammed in there. <laughs> Alright, so there you got the bottom jaw. Nice and clean. Let's go ahead and take care of this one. Alright, this one here came apart, which is perfectly fine. This is the top jaw. He's going to have two parts on the top that are kind of like uh, uh, bones that cover his top lip. And that's these two pieces right here. Make sure you put a, some kind of strainer down there too. I should have said that to start with. I mean, I'm pretty sure it won't hurt to go down in there, but you know, less clogs the better. Make sure this is nice and clean. On my last mount, the, uh, the bottom jaw came apart and the top jaw stayed together and this mount here the top jaw came apart and the bottom jaw stayed together. Uh, I guess it just all depends. Alright, so here we go. Got the major pieces. So we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 pieces if the uh, one of your jaws stays together and 13 pieces if one of your uh, both your jaws uh, come apart so what we do after this is we get just a little container this is a cashew container what you want to do is you want to put all the pieces inside this container And don't worry if your uh, the jaw that's together falls apart too, because you can just super glue that. All right, once you get them all in a container, what we want to do is we want to take regular hydrogen peroxide and fill it to where the bones are covered with hydrogen peroxide and you want to let that sit for 12 hours at least once it sits for 12 hours all of this discoloration is going to disappear the only thing that's still going to have color in it are the uh the crushers in the jaws which looks really good so let's go ahead and do that all right guys here we got the uh sheep head skull you can see that there's still little pieces of meat in there um the hydrogen peroxide will take care of all that stuff. It won't dissolve it totally, but um, once these get done uh, bleaching, the hydrogen peroxide pretty much ble bleaches the bones. Once they get done bleaching, that any of that uh, residual meat is going to be really easy to take off. So let's go ahead and set this on a shelf and let it sit for 12 hours. All right, everybody. <coughs> This is the part everybody's been waiting for. Um, it is also the most difficult part. I'll try to, to do my best to narrate it while I'm actually assembling the uh, pieces. But we took the um, bones out of the hydrogen peroxide, gave them a good wash down. And, um, you know, since I got other stuff to do today, um, I wanted to uh, to speed up the drying process, so I put the bones on aluminum foil in a baking pan in a toaster oven under warm for about 15-20 minutes and flipped them over uh, once during the cycle. So <clears throat> the bones are pretty much dry. Uh, what you're going to notice too about this process is that the um, the skull is going to weep a little bit of uh, fish oil. It's going to be clear. Um, and odorless. I mean, it's just 
the fish got a lot of oil in them, so it's going to be constantly weeping. Uh, just a little tiny bit of uh, clear, clear oil. So during the process, if you want to just get a nice paper towel uh, to the side or a really soft rag, like maybe a microfiber rag, you can actually soak up that oil as it comes out and it'll be a lot easier to glue together. So the two types of glue I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use uh, Gorilla uh, Impact Tough glue. Um, it's cyanoacrylate, which is super glue but it's got a, uh, a longer bond time, so it'll allow me to, to position the, the cutter and the back of the gill plate perfectly before it really sets up. And I've got regular uh, liquid super glue, and that will allow me to attach the gill plates to the skull, and, um, and it'll bond it a lot more quickly and uh, give it some strength. And now in this finished skull, you can see that I put a stick in there and that's glued to the uh, main portion of the skull and to the uh, the gill plate so that just gives this a little bit of strength because the only two contact points are here and here and these are uh, basically butt joints they're butted up against each other there's no socket or anything like that for for a bone to go into so that's one thing you'll notice too when you're putting together a sheep head skull is um, these pieces are pretty much going to fit in a, a certain location and you'll see what I mean what I mean while we're putting this together everything's got its uh, uh, correct place and you have to make sure that those bones butt up together and fit correctly like if you see this one here this looks like almost one piece that's because it fits perfectly together same with here if you get these parts wrong then this skull is not going to go together correctly these butts are not going to line up so you have to pay really close attention to where you're gluing these pieces together or else the skull is not going to line up in the end when you try to put it all together during this process, uh, your fingers will get a little bit oily just from touching the parts uh, as the bones weep out some of that uh, oil. So uh, we're going to go ahead and assemble the top jaw because the top jaw came apart on me on this one. So I'm going to use the, uh, the more forgiving Gorilla. And when you put these together, you want to make sure these bones line up and the teeth line up. Or else, when you try to put everything together at the end, nothing's going to match. Let's just hold this in place. All right, everybody, we have a um, the two pieces of the top jaw assembled here. Now the uh, next piece is going to be the uh, the plates that are underneath the top lip. So in order to do that, you'll notice that there's a left side and a right side. Okay. One end of these is going to have a hook, and the other one's going to have like a little axe. Now, the hook goes up underneath the jaw, and then the, uh, the hook side is going to come underneath this little flap right here. See that? Just like that. So, we want to put a little piece of, or a little drop of super glue on these contact points. So, there's going to be one there and one right here and we'll just go ahead and slide this into place and let it sit for a second super glue is really good at bonding uh bone and skin so it'll only take a second for it to to, to set into place so let's do the other side Yep, 
the other half of his mustache. Locate the little hook right there. Hook goes under the jaw. And as you can see, everything just meshes right together. And that is the top jaw. This, this piece right here. All right, so we're gonna let that one sit to the side. Now, uh, we're gonna take the bottom jaw and um, for the bottom jaw, that's what takes these little um, arrowhead things. And these are, these are side specific to pretty much everything here is. This one here's got a little bit of oil weeping out. We're gonna go ahead and wipe it off. So you can see that that piece fits right there. You can see where this top piece here hooks into that groove. So that's where that piece goes. So we're gonna put a little glue here, a little glue here. and hook that in. Uh, I wouldn't advise trying to do this with like uh, modeling glue, like you try to put um, uh, models together with. It's just not gonna bond fast enough and you'll be holding these pieces together forever and you'll get bored and you'll get frustrated. So you <laughs> really don't wanna do that. Uh, let's put a little in here, a little here, a little here. Put this other arrowhead in. So. little time to bond and there's the bottom jaw this piece is trying to come out a little bit going for some regular super glue in these contact points that'll bond it together faster But as you do this, you'll pretty much notice that everything has its place. And uh, most of these parts will pretty much fall, uh, fall into their own little sockets and, and where they're supposed to go. The only uh, exception to that is attaching the gill plates to the actual skull itself. And those are kind of floating joints because the gill plates got to move as the fish breathes. So those things are in constant movement. So those uh, joints are pretty much just uh, butted up against one another. And that one is a little bit more difficult to do because the gill plates are so heavy that uh, you really got to hold it still for the super glue to set on it. Okay, so that's the bottom jaw. All right, we're into a little bit more of the difficult stuff here. Um, the placement of these two pieces is very important because you're going to have a connection point here and a connection point right here. And this has got to hit the uh, bottom jaw and this has got to hit the top of the skull. So we want to try to fit these together pretty much perfectly. And the way you do that, each, each gill plate is different. So what you're going to notice is uh, sometimes these things will drop right into like a, a little groove and sometimes they won't. This one here, um, you know, like I said, every fish is different too. Every bone structure is different. So what you're trying to do with this is you're trying to get a nice, steady, continuous curve right here. And if you get that steady, continuous curve right there, then that pretty much means that this gill plate is assembled correctly. But they're not gonna pop together like Legos <laughs> because these two pieces move independently of one another. So we got that one together. We got a nice smooth curve right there. So this one should be good. Let's go ahead and put the other one together. All right, guys, the next part is the bottom jaw. 
Um, this is one of the uh, last pieces that pretty much just uh, fits together uh, in a pretty definite way. So once you get the bottom jaw and the top jaw connected, just look around, make sure it looks good, looks symmetrical. And if you're happy with what you see, just glue down some of the contact points. Get some of his teeth up here. Here. And once those two pieces are uh, together, just hold them together until they uh, until they stick. Let the let the glue have a, a little bit of time to hold. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. <laughs> All right, fellas. Uh, this next part here. Uh, is a little tricky and it requires uh, an extended hold time and your uh, contact points are going to be right here so basically what I'm doing is I'm just washing this with a little uh, alcohol to get it totally clean and uh, create a, a strong bond to get any oil off that may be on here whatsoever because you're going to be holding this for uh, maybe about five minutes or so. So that's one contact point right there. And the other contact point is going to be on the main skull with this little thing that looks like a little pig snout. You want to wash this off too because that's the other contact point. And this little pig snout, <laughs> since there's no uh, connective tissue or, or meat, in here that this little pig snout's what's going to be holding this jaw this entire jaw up uh until you get the gill plates on so um it's going to take th this thing's actually quite heavy so basically what you're going to do is you're going to put a little glue there and you're going to put this pig snout right there where these two bones meet there's a little bitty socket right there there's a little indentation that that pig snout will fit in and what you want to do is when you get that in there this point right here you want it to be parallel with the rest of the skull just like that to form just a regular uh shape you don't want it to be up like this because if it is your gill plates aren't going to connect right so you want it to have it parallel right there to where everything's nice and level so let's go ahead and do that all right <laughs> This uh, process can be a little bit tedious uh, since, as we all know, the only thing super glue bonds instantly is human skin. So, um, what you can do <clears throat> is when you're gl gluing the little pig snout to the jaw, um, you can put a light coat of, um, if it's not bonding, very well after you hold it for a while what you can do is you can put a light coat on the jaw light coat on the end of the pig snout uh kind of wipe away the excess super glue and introduce some foreign matter in there which uh, q-tips are okay so you can go in there and touch the super glue uh to the q-tip to the super glue let it sit and then tear it off so what you'll be doing is you'll put, be putting little cotton fibers in there uh on the snout and on the jaw and you're building up a layer of material that super glue likes to uh, bond better than um, a semi oily bone. So uh, that's a tip right there too. And once you get it to where it will hold by itself, it's best to just let it sit like this for maybe 30, 40 minutes. And that way you get a nice strong bond. So what you wind up with is uh, something that looks like this. So the next step here is to attach the gill plates. And the uh, final step uh, in the, the bone assembly. Um, there's one more step that I do uh, that reinforces it. And that's to put a, uh, a stick between the gill plates. And that just makes the gill plate stronger because you've only got two free-floating 
uh, points right here for the gill plate to attach to. So it's not super strong, it's kind of fragile, but if you put that stick in there, um, it makes it a lot stronger and you can paint the stick white and you know, it's be barely noticeable. Um, otherwise, you really can't handle it that, that much. Uh, you drop it, it's probably gonna come apart because of the nature of the joint. So uh, what we do now <clears throat> is we're gonna attach this gill plate and what we're looking for is we're looking for these two little grooves right here. That groove there and this groove here. Now since these uh, gill plates, the fish needs to breathe so he's constantly moving these. So they're not hard joints, they're just little associations where it'll pivot on his skull. And all this is held together with uh, sinew and muscle. So the it's not going to be like a lego to where you can pop it into place so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little super glue here on this pivot point and up here where it connects now where it connects up here is pretty much just your choice since it's pretty much free floating up there with the gill moving uh, you can either choose to have the, your sheep head with his gills in close or the gills flared out and it just all depends on how you uh, how you want your display so we're going to go ahead and hold this here and let it stick and then we'll do the other side Alrighty, we got the uh, left gill plate on as you can see there's a pretty good groove right there that it fits into all right folks that's it we got the other gill plate on um, during the course of this process and uh, positioning the gill plates the way you want them just be really careful with this front part right here because that's a pretty weak joint right there but as long as you make sure that your gill plates go in these grooves right here that's uh, one of the, the critical steps, and, the, and that way you can uh, decide whether you want a, a sheephead who's got his gills in, like he's just swimming around, or whether you want a sheephead that's got his gill plates flared out and uh, is in a more aggressive uh, posture. So it's up to you whether you want a happy sheephead or a mad sheephead, but... Uh, the assembly pot process can be a little uh, aggravating because you're you're still working with more or less wet bone. Um, if you want to let the bones dry out a little bit before you attempt it, maybe wash them, uh, put them in some degreaser or something. I'm not really sure how that would affect it because I've I've never really done it before. But uh, during the process, the heat from your hands um, will bring out some oils in the uh in the fresh bone so just leave yourself a good i'd say assembling the skull letting it dry putting the pieces together take you about a good maybe hour um maybe less if everything's dry and uh, you make sure everything's clean so uh there you go um i hope this tutorial was uh easy to follow along with and uh give you some good pointers about how to do it. Um, I know a lot of you guys out there love the sheeps like I do, and this is a uh, really nice um, piece to uh, display. Now, you gotta remember that uh, until these bones completely dry out, they're gonna weep a little bit of oil, okay? The oil is gonna be uh, clear and it's gonna be odorless, so <clears throat> just let them go ahead and uh, sit in an area where they can dry out. Don't put it on any type of surface that would be affected by oil dripping on it, and then you should be okay. So um, that's gonna about that's gonna be about it for this video here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like the content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like what I do, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the water.